And good evening, AP Physics students. Mr. Kirsten coming at you here. And tonight we're going to be talking about ooh, a great electrostatics problem that has so much physics in it. Uh, problem number 41 out of chapter 16. I'm excited for this problem because there's just so much good physics in it. It's um, everything we've learned up until this point we're going to have to use. Every tool in our physics tool bag uh, is going to get brought out for this problem. So I'm excited. Uh, let's start out with uh, what the problem tells us. It tells us we have a plate, a conductor, that's negative over here and positive over here and that there is uh, an electric field between these plates of magnitude 1.45 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb. Now, uh, this electron would be accelerated uh, this way, right? Repelled from the negative, attracted to the positive plate here. And there's a hole in the positive plate so that when the electron leaves, it would leave at some speed v. And uh, the problem is asking us, what is this speed? And can the force of gravity uh, safely be ignored here? Is that an assumption that would be valid? Uh, we're told that the distance between the plates, uh, which I have called delta x, is uh, 1.1 centimeters. And of course, information we would probably know or look up on our table of information, the mass of an, an electron might come in handy. Now, the problem doesn't explicitly state it, but it's kind of assumed from the context this electron starting from rest at the edge of the one plate. And we want to know, so our initial velocity of the electron is zero, uh, what's the final velocity, and can the force of gravity be ignored? Well, what a great problem. Uh, let's, let's just dive in here. Let's get going. Well, here's what I see right away when I look at this problem. I think kinematics, motion, uh, this electron must be uh, undergoing a constant acceleration. So if I go all the way back to chapter 2, I can say, oh, if only I knew the acceleration here, I could find out what this final speed is. Um, and v naught is zero, so really this problem comes down to the final speed of the electron squared is equal to 2 times the acceleration times delta x, right? Kinematics we're going to need to know. Well, what would be the acceleration of this electron? Well, the acceleration uh, dynamics we're using here would be the net force uh, divided by uh, the mass of the electron. Well, what forces are acting on the electron. Well, for the time being, we're going to ignore gravity and state that really the only force acting on uh, the electron is the electrostatic force, F sub e, or the force due to um, the electric field. Now, don't forget, in this problem, the electric field is actually pointing this way, right? Electric fields point uh, in the direction that a positive test charge would move. If I had a little positive test charge in here, it would be repelled from the positive plate and attracted to the negative plate. Of course, an electron would experience a force in the opposite direction, right? So F sub E on the electron is to the right. Okay, well, if I know what the force is and I know what the charge is, right? And of course, the charge uh, on the electron is just E, right? The fundamental charge, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs, right? So we could say uh, that the acceleration of the electron is simply E times E divided by M sub E. That's a lot of E's. E, the charge on the electron, times the magnitude of the electric field uh, divided by the mass of the electron would be the um, acceleration. So here we've used kinematics, here we're using dynamics, here we're using electrostatics. Oh, so much physics, I, I, I love it. So let's take this uh, for the acceleration and plug that in right up here. And we would get that V squared, the final velocity, um, of the electron square would equal uh, 2 times E times E divided by M sub uh, E times delta X, right? Uh, so if we wanted to solve for V there, we would take the square root of each side and we would get that V is equal to uh, 2 
times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th times charge of an electron in coulombs times the magnitude of the electric field uh, times delta x 0.011 right I always convert to uh, our favorite units meters kilograms meters per second squared right and we're going to divide this by uh, the mass of an electron and of course we have to take the square root of all of this and if we do that uh, we would get that our final velocity of the electron after just one centimeter of acceleration uh, would be about 7.49 uh, times 10 to the sixth meters per second so almost uh, almost 10 percent the speed of light almost 10 to the seventh uh, meters per second in uh, just under a centimeter that's that's fast um, so uh, that's the first part of our problem and uh, the second part of our problem is um, can gravity be ignored ignored I don't know how to spell ignored oh I went off the page a little bit can gravity be ignored <laughs> uh, all right look at the camera mr. Kirsten okay well here's one way to think about this let's compare the acceleration the electron experiences due to the electric field uh, compared to um, the acceleration the electron field uh, would feel uh, due to gravity so uh, we already kind of solved for a sub e right uh, that would be e times e divided by m sub e and let's compare that to the acceleration the electron would feel uh, due to gravity which is just g 9.8 meters per second squared uh, well long story short uh, if you plug in the numbers here you get a ratio here of about 2.55 uh, times 10 to the um, 15th divided by g of course which is 9.8 uh, in other words, this ratio, a sub e, uh, divided by uh, a sub g, is about 2.6 times 10 to the 14th. Now, did I need the 2.6 here? No, it's 10 to the, the acceleration due to the electrostatic field is 10 to the 14th times larger than the acceleration due to gravity. In other words, only if I measured the acceleration to 14 significant figures would the acceleration due to gravity uh, be significant? So no, it is not significant. And usually when dealing with electrostatics and electrons and that type of thing, it is totally insignificant. Um, you know, unless it was different by a factor of maybe 10 to the third, or you had really, really sensitive equipment, would it be significant? And then even then, you know, it's, it's pretty unlikely. So, uh, so the answer is no uh, uh, or pardon me, no, it's not significant, so yes, uh, yes, gravity can be ignored, most definitely yes, okay, uh, for your joke, so nice work today, uh, physicists, for your joke today, I would just like to give you, uh, a little background here for your joke, uh, Discover Magazine rated the second biggest story of the year next to the, uh, discovering of the Higgs boson, uh, particle, the, uh, uh, discoveries, uh, pardon me, curiosities landing on Mars. Um, so we've talked about this in class, it's pretty cool, uh, but I've never showed you a good joke about it, so here we go, I'm gonna show you a little cartoon, uh, about the Mars rover curiosity, it's not one I made, but one I found on the internet that I hope you found humorous, so stay tuned, here it is. And here's the joke, and it's curiosity killed the cat. Ha ha ha. Because it landed on the cat, which is funny in some ways because, you know, uh, you know, there's no cats on Mars, and it doesn't make any sense. And kind of sad in other ways, because it's always sad when a cat dies. And I don't know what it is about physicists that they don't like cat. I mean, Schrodinger wants to kill cats, curiosity. But, but it's funny. Uh, so anyway, this is from the website aliceastroinfo.com. Uh, have a good uh, break, physics students. Keep laughing. Keep studying your physics.